What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again, and yesterday on the launch of probably the most hated GPU of all time, I drove six hours to pick it up and bring it back for testing. I was up till 3 a.m. last night going ahead and getting all of the testing done that I could. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like the performance for the Radeon RX 6500 XT is much better for mining than it is for gaming. And this was done on a motherboard, a B550 with PCI Express 4.0. So your mileage may vary even worse or get worse, I suppose, on a 3.0 motherboard, at least as it pertains to the coins that are profitable uh, at all on it. We're going to get into the details of the mining performance for the RX 6500 XT right after a word from today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is BT Miners. Purchasing mining equipment online can be dangerous. With all of the fake storefronts and scams, it can be hard to find a reliable source. That's why when BT Miners reached out for a channel sponsorship, I started by verifying that ordering and delivery went smoothly with a purchase of my own. If you are looking to purchase ASICs hardware from Bitcoin to Dogecoin miners, they are available for purchase on bt-miners.com. BT Miners is a trusted source by both asicminervalue.com and CryptoMinder.com. Follow the affiliate link in the description and use promo code FREESHIPPING2021 for free shipping on your order. Now, luckily, we do have official specifications for this AMD GPU on the AMD website. And what you're looking at is 16 compute units with 16 ray accelerators and then 11.53 teraflops of performance through uh, 1,024 stream processors as a boost frequency of up to 2,815 megahertz. This is due to the new, of course, six nanometer manufacturing process. And this is probably the only saving grace for this particular GPU. It has 64 texture units, 32 ROPs, and 5.4 billion transistor count. If we go ahead and take a look at the memory, which is going to be important for mining, it's underwhelming to say the least. It has 16 megabytes of the Infinity Cache, which in theory should improve performance as far as utilizing that in on gaming, but it doesn't appear that it's helped very much. We have GDDR6 as the memory type. That is going to be a memory speed of 18 gigabits per second, which is the fastest memory speed currently available on the RX 6000 series. So you would hope that it would be a little bit better, but it's not going to make up for that memory interface of 64 bit or the memory size of four gigabytes. This basically means that you have a memory bandwidth of 144 gigabytes per second even though it says that it has the effective memory bandwidth of 232 gigabytes per second, uh, which doesn't really translate into the mining portion, unfortunately. The particular model that we picked up was the PowerColor Mini ITX version. It will be a single fan. It has a single six pin PCI power and then of course the rest of the power is going to come through the rail so for testing on the test bench what we have is a isolated 750 watt gold rated power supply that is basically tripped to just turn on by itself and then it is plugged into not only a riser but the gpu itself as well now to make sure we got full performance i did take the gpu off and plug it directly into the motherboard for the full by four and ran a couple of the same tests and we didn't see any change in performance this means that as far as mining is concerned you shouldn't have any issues with risers just with potentially motherboards that only support pci express 3.0 if we're talking about coins that are going to be core clock intensive so there's all the caveats that I can really get to and get them out of the way. Let's go ahead and talk about the mining performance here. Now, because the GPU has less than four gigabytes of video memory, it's not going to be able to mine Ethereum, at least effectively at all. Unfortunately, it doesn't mine other coins that are available on ET hash with less than four gigabytes of DAG very well either. We're looking at 0.468 mega hash a second 
at 90 watts. Pretty terrible performance, obviously due to the memory performance of it. So unfortunately, if you're looking for a budget entry into mining, you want to probably look at used Polaris GPUs for this. We're talking about RX 470s, 570s, 480s, and 580s. And that will get you, of course, with the eight gigabyte variants into mining Ethereum itself or just better performance in Ethereum with the four gigabyte support on those specific coins, something like Ethereum Classic. So moving on from there, we did test Zellhash, which is going to be Flux. It was eight solutions a second at 80 watts on the wall. Of course, a reminder that we are measuring at the wall with the kilowatts. So what you see in the software is reported a little bit different. And then we went ahead and took a look at Fira, which failed to mine, along with Cortex, which failed to mine, no GPU support, as well as Ergo, which obviously that one failed to mine as well because no GPU support there. The next coin that we were able to test was Ravencoin with the Kapow algorithm. We had nine mega hash a second at 91 watts at the wall. Then we had vert hash, which was 0.21 mega hash a second. So 210 uh, kilo hash a second at 52 watts, making it the most power friendly algorithm, of course, for vert coin that's kind of expected. Then we did take a look at the saving grace for this particular GPU, which is going to be a coin called Ton. Ton coin, the open network, is a core heavy algorithm. And this is not something you'll be able to mine for very much longer. I think the latest contract that runs out before it goes proof of stake is 200 days. So keep that in mind. But we did end up at 1.1 giga hash at 91 watts, making it by far the best performer across the board as far as profitability is concerned. Let's go ahead and calculate that profitability now. So hopping into what to mine, I've gone ahead and plugged everything in. And if you're looking at Ravencoin with the current pricing, you would be making 31 cents a day after power cost. On Flux, you would be looking at 12 cents a day after power cost. On Vertcoin, you would be looking at 11 cents a day after power cost. And then from there on out, you are basically looking at losing money on any Ethereum ET hash based coin, whether that be Ethereum Classic, Quark Chain, Ethereum O, and so on. Unfortunately, this is just where it lands. You are not gonna be mining Ethereum with this particular GPU or ET hash coins in general, unless of course you wanna lose some money. Now it does get better with profitability by quite a bit on Toncoin, the open network. And what you end up with is 86 cents a day after power. The interesting thing here that should be discussed or pointed out is that technically this is the best ROI you can currently obtain at retail off the shelf from places like Micro Center, and they are available at Micro Center. Unfortunately, that ROI is going to go past the point where Ton will not be mineable anymore. And so, at that point, you're stuck with basically Ravencoin, which is not going to net you a lot per day, even if you built a full rig of these. And so I wouldn't recommend purchasing the RX 6500 XT for mining under any circumstances really at this point, unless of course you just can't afford anything else and you want some ton, then I guess you could go ahead and earn yourself 0.3 ton per day, which is uh, not fantastic if we're being completely honest about everything there. I hope you guys enjoyed this review of the RX 6500 XT hash rates and that you find it helpful. Please hit the like, comment, subscribe, notification bell down below, and definitely share the videos out with your friends. It's definitely going to be helpful because the ROI for this GPU will be purely based on YouTube ad revenue at this point, which uh, if I've calculated out the previous reviews, it's not going to hit that. But that's okay. We have some more content. That's what we're here to do is test GPUs and maybe find a magic bullet here and there. I'll be looking forward to testing out the RTX 3050 when it does launch. You can definitely check out, of course, my 
hash rate predictions on that one. That one looks a little bit more promising with eight gigabytes of GDDR6, and hopefully it will prove to be formidable within the mining space. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to hit the subscribe button for more, or check out this playlist for more crypto content related topics.